listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's OBEHAVE with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Yes, my voice does sound a little different. I'm not going through puberty. I had my first bout with laryngitis last week, so I'm on the rebound. So you're just going to have to handle this husky sounding voice. I've got a husky mix in my house, but she doesn't sound like me. Anyway, today's topic poop. I got your attention, didn't I? Now, doggy doo doo is a big deal. Consider this stinky statistic. About 40% of American dog owners do not clean up after their dogs. Now, there's about 77 million dogs in this country and millions more in Canada. So the poop pileup is staggering. But we can clear the air and our sidewalks. And here to offer the scoop on poop and how to create the environmentally sound hound is our special guest, Sylvie Lampron. She is founder of Free Play Dog Company. Hey, welcome to the show, Sylvie. Thank you, Arden. All right, we're going to learn about the pet pollution problem, how to prevent these poop perpetrators, and ways to diplomatically sneak in pet responsibility in people of all ages right after we take this commercial break. So sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. All behave, we'll be right back. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the All Behave show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Our guest today is Sylvie Lamprin. She is founder of Free Play Dog Company. She's a woman on a mission. To make dog poop poof disappear on sidewalks, lawns, and other places. And she's also unleashing a new product called the multi sack that is reported to be good for people, pets, and the planet. Hey, that's a lot of peas, Sylvie. Can you explain what the heck is a multi sack? The multi sack is designed to be fashionable as well as, well as useful. Really, there's compartment contains a pocket for keys, a cell phone and waste bag, but also there's an outside pocket really created for easy disposal of the bag to carry when you're going outside for a walk. We're talking to you from Quebec. Is there a lot of uh, poop perpetrators out there? Are, are the people in our, our wonderful neighbors to the north, Canada, do people pick up after their dogs? Well, a certain amount of people does, but a lot doesn't. So it makes that on the, the social aspect very difficult to create a lovely community environment with uh, dog lovers and non-dog lovers, basically. Yeah, you could have quite a fido feud on your hands, right? If people see someone walking their dog and just accidentally forgetting to pick up after their dog, right? Yeah, that's why we've developed the multi-stock so if 
people walk with their dog with a mouth to sack, then they won't be seen as being a perpetrator with the, their poop, dog poop. <laughs> I love this. I'm glad we're doing a whole show on poop. It's been it's been my dream, Sylvie, to talk about dog poop. And there's a lot of fun involved, but you know, health wise, poop is not fertilizer. I was doing a little poop research for our show and I was pretty much bummed out to realize that dog waste actually contains some very harmful bacteria and viruses. We're talking E. coli and salmonella, really not nice things for the environment or for our health, right? Yeah, you're correct. And this is like the information that people doesn't have. So many people think it's a fertilizer or it's going to go away with rain, but actually it doesn't. It, mm-hmm. There's, like you said, a lot of bacteria in it, and really it causes pollution. Uh, beach to be closed when where there's a lot a lot of uh, dog walkers around. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at if you happen to uh, think, oh, I'll just hose it down and it'll go down the drain. Well, guess what, folks? It can actually contaminate our water supplies. And I don't know what the situation is in Canada, but in the United States, there's a lot of rivers that you can't swim in because of uh, fecal contamination, a.k.a. poop floating downstream. (laughs) Yeah, you're right, Arden. And what's it like in Canada? You got cleaner rivers? No, the problem's still the same. And the main thing is that people are not aware, and they really need to be educated on it. If they knew what was the impact of not picking up after their dogs, I just can't believe they would keep acting that way. Yeah, I think uh, you've got something there now. Give us a little background on yourself. I mean, how did you get into the whole poop campaign business? I mean, what's your background, Sylvie? Well, I'm coming from a business owner background first. And Mm -hmm. also, I'm a dog lover. Uh, Mm -hmm. Dog always been part of my life. So there was an opportunity that came to me with the multi-sack, and I really uh, jumped on it. And now uh, we're having a, a design with an industrial designer and as well as a fashion designer as part of the team. Plus the experience of walking in uh, dog poops. Which <laughs> I, I, which Check was your not shoes, a, everybody. Check your shoes. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the smell and the experience is not good at all. Plus, no. And what I realized with all that is that Really, people need some help and support to to be able to to make it right to clean up after their dog and to really feel like they're doing the right thing. Well, let's talk. Now, you have a couple of kids. Do you have dogs right now, Sylvie? Yes, I have two dogs, uh, Bernie's Mountain and a Golden Retriever. And um, I think, I have- wait a minute. I think those are dogs that give quite a good deposit, if you will. They're hefty depositors, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, quite big. You can't miss Plus, it. You can't miss it, right? Oh, no, you can miss it. <laughs> okay, okay. And then you've and, got a couple of two-leggers, right? Yes, two wonderful okay. teenagers. They're uh-huh. really involved in uh, Free Play Dog Company, plus with the dog uh, training and becoming a responsible dog owners as well. Mm-hmm. They're really there. Oh, that's cool. You said the term I'd love to hear, wonderful teenagers, because sometimes teenage years can be kind of trying for both the teenagers and for the parents. So your two children are all about trying to help you out with your business? Yeah, they're really involved. They want to know what's going on, where the business stands, uh, what's the next step. And also, they'd love to be on a show with me later, or uh, like I'm coming back from Super Zoo uh, right now, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, was held in Las Vegas. They would mm-hmm. have loved to, to join me. So yeah. uh, I promise next year they're going to be with me. And what are their names? Alexandra mm-hmm. and William. William, okay. Nice, strong names. I'm glad there's no peas in their names so we can make any poop references. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Now, you are bilingual, all of you, because you live in Quebec. We? Oui? Well, yeah, for myself, yes. My kids are pretty good. They can understand a lot. Uh, the speaking uh, needs to be taught, basically, but we're working on it right now. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the pet pollution problem. I mean, we were giving out a little bit of information how there's a lot of bad things in a dog poop. We're talking E. coli and salmonella. Just how serious is the pet pollution problem in your mind, Sylvie? 
Well, it's related to ALT. It's related to social responsibility. These are the main things that touches me. As a dog owner, I like to go for a walk with my dog. But if I walk by dog poops, that it's not from my dog. I feel really bad when I cross someone else who doesn't have a, poop, uh, a dog and is going for mm-hmm. a walk. Yeah, and that person really look at me. <laughs> Most of the time, you're being looked at like if you're a bad, irresponsible dog owner. And really, that is the main thing. It touches me, and I really want more freedom and more fun for dog owners to go outside. I know. I think you're touching on a very touchy topic. You know, you're getting that look, if you will, of blame when it isn't your dog that's made that deed. I mean, I'm waiting for people to have little doggy poop DNA tests saying, hey, it's not my dog. It's not my dog. But the more you protest, the more the problem becomes more obvious. I don't know about you, but I spend a lot of time picking up after other dog owners. So I'm always carrying extra poop bags. And if we don't clean up after our dogs, you know, really cool things that we do with our dogs are going to get curtailed. So it sounds like you're kind of on a mission in North America to help us clean up our act, if you will. Yeah, you're right, Arden. I really feel to to help and support the community to get a greener place, a better place for us to go and also get more spaces to play with our dog, more access. Really, dog brings so much in our life. Oh, yeah, they do. What are your two dogs like? Let's get their names and uh, what are their personalities like? Well, the oldest one, which is eight years old, the Golden Retriever, it's a her. Uh, her mm-hmm. name is Muddy. Muddy? Okay. Yeah, M-O-L-L-Y. Oh, Molly. And, okay. Yeah, okay. Molly. And yeah. the younger one was the Bernese Mountain. He's one years old now, and his name is Burton. Burton. Okay. Yeah. And how much does Burton weigh right now? Uh, I would say uh, 80 pounds. And he's still got some pounds to go, right? Yeah, usually Bernese Mountain are around uh, 125. Oh, my gosh. And how much does Molly weigh? About 70 pounds. Really? She's younger. Now, you're doing that. You're switching from metrics to pounds, right? Kilos to pounds, right? Well, yes. Uh, That's pretty good. <laughs> well, I'm used to pounds more than a kilogram here. Oh, okay. And what are their personalities like? How are Molly and Burton? Well, Molly really acts as a, a mother for the younger dog. She also trained the younger one uh, how to behave, uh, how to be respectful towards mm-hmm. Earth, towards uh, other things. So she's really acting as a mother, plus with the kids. Like, she likes to be there for them when uh, they come back to school. Uh, she would go to the, just before they arrive, uh, wait for her uh, where the bus stopped by. Oh, really? So, yeah, so she's really a family dog. As uh, Burton, the younger one, he wants to play. Wants to play all the time. Okay. Well, I see the smile coming out of your voice, so he does make you happy, right? Oh, yeah. They both bring so much love into our home. Yeah, I cannot imagine my life without them. It would be uh, so much uh, different. Yeah, I understand. I can totally give you pause up on that. We're speaking with Sylvie Lamprin. She is the founder of Free Play Dog Company. I urge you all to go to her website, which is Dog. Dot com And in addition, she started a pretty cool blog. It's easy to find. It's blog.freeplaydog.com. And each day, she's going to be posting some insightful things about what life is like for being the mother of two teenagers and two dogs and running a business and trying to help this become, all of us become what she's terming environmentally sound hounds. We're going to learn more about Sylvie's mission right after we pay for this show by taking a commercial break. So sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Question, what do I want? What do I need? I'll take a back shot. I really should mention I need time, I need love, I crave attention. This is new waiting by the door. With shaking tails and happy hearts. And running circles round the floor. That's always when the party starts. Children, they are the 
Love My Pets, the new single by Mark Winter, available on iTunes. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to Obehave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the OBH show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Yep, the one with the horse voice. I'm not a horse, of course, but I'm overcoming a little bit of laryngitis. And Sylvie's been a good sport to being on my show while she gets to hear my husky sounding voice. Sounds pretty sexy, huh, Sylvie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. You got the sexy going. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I was noodling around on the different websites, and I think there's somebody you must meet, or as we do in the pun world, mutt meet. There's a guy that actually has a website called thepoopdetective.com. Have you heard of this guy? No, never heard that. Thank you for me. Yeah, you got to, I think you guys should meet and collaborate because he is in, in uh, New Jersey area of uh, the United States. And he actually has this really funny video of this guy that looks like he's a poop detective who's filming in a car somebody not picking up after their dog. So he uses a lot of humor and all. But just like you, he's trying to educate people about the need to pick up after our poop. So I think if the poop detective met you, Sylvie Lamprin, and with your free play dog, I think the world would smell a lot better. Uh, thank you, Arden. I'm very sure I'll, I'll go and have a look at it for sure. Yeah, because he gave some um, some tips on pet waste disposal. His thing is the best way to handle that messy situation, you can scoop the poop, throw it in the garbage, or flush it down in the toilet only if you have a city sewer system. If you have a septic system, that's a doggy no-no, right? Yeah, yeah. And also you make sure that you remove it from the bag. <laughs> Yeah, also. yeah. Otherwise, you're going to become best friends with your plumber. Well, yeah, for sure. And it, it won't go away or it will not digest it, basically. Right, right. Now, the other thing that I was surprised about in doing my poop research, I love this. This was such a fun assignment, is a lot of people think, oh, I'll just I'll throw it in the compost pile and we'll have some nice, rich fertilizer to fortify our tomatoes and flowers. But what I'm understanding is that's something you should not do. You should never compost or, or bury your dog poop. Is that right? Yeah, you're correct on that. That's very important because uh, dog eats like uh, meat. So uh-huh. the bacteria and also the enzyme contained mm-hmm. uh, in the uh, their poop base well doesn't go in a normal compost. It really has to be burned at a higher level to be uh, de- degradable. Okay. So yeah, don't ever do that. Yeah, because I was I found out that believe it or not, E. coli and Salmonella can survive in dog poop. Ready, folks, for months. And roundworms, those little hardy parasites, can actually survive in soil. For up to four years. That's pretty startling. <laughs> and thanks for bringing that up because that's really what uh, we're going to be working on, creating uh, awareness and educating people towards dog poop. Because these are facts that I discovered not that long ago by mm-hmm. doing all the research uh, on dog poop. And right. I, I wasn't aware of that. I thought it would be uh, compostable like everything else, but it's really not. What's the story with our President Obama? Have you have any evidence? Does he pick up after Bo or not? Or does he have like secret service people pick up after Bo? Or what's the deal with Bo? Do you know? Well, what I, I've been reading and seeing is that first when they add their, uh, they add their dog, the children, like the daughter, were told to pick up after their dogs. I've seen some great uh, picture of the family walking the dogs, uh, picking up. Uh, apparently, Mr. Obama's pick up uh, on uh, the nightly walk when uh, at night when he goes for a walk. Really, uh-huh. when he's there, he's doing it. Okay, so there's no presidential pardon for not picking up poop involved with President Obama. Well, that's not what we see. Okay. All right. What about in Canada? Does your leader have a dog to your knowledge? No, 
No. No. Uh, well, nothing that has been uh, advertised or publicly told. No, it's not something that was uh, publicly advertised. Okay. Now, with your company, Free Play Dog Company, one of the parts of your company that seems to be very near and dear to you is that you want to be able to teach children about being responsible with their pets and kind of getting a new generation, if you will, of responsible pet owners. What are some practical tips that you can share that will help uh, kids be more responsible and maybe something you could pass on to parents to teach their kids? Well, the main responsibility would be to parents to trust their kids about their capabilities. And also, if parents give kids responsibility, please don't do it instead of the kid. Let them doing it. Like in our house, I make sure that I pay for the food, but my mm-hmm. kid has to feed the dog and make sure every morning and every evening the dog are fed. Okay, so how do you follow up on that, and how do you make sure that Molly and Burton get full bellies? Since we we had the dog, it was part of the deal. When we bought the dog, we sat down together, we planned a budget, because having two big dogs uh, at home uh, really makes a difference. When you think about veterinarian, uh, it's like dog food, neutral, uh, to neutralize your dog, really. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the younger one, it changes the budget. Oh, yeah. And so, you can't forget the toys and the treats. Come on. We're talking, you yeah. Know, also, big it's things. part of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that on behalf of my two dogs who are looking at me like, don't forget the toys. Don't forget the treats. No, so, I want to go. I want one. <laughs> so teaching them to make sure that they feed the dogs twice a day. What are some of the other things that your kids are doing? Well, my daughter, when it was time to uh, to buy the youngest one, she's the one who called the breeder. She mm-hmm. reserved the dog. She uh, sent the check deposit. She also reserved the date we would go and uh, pick up the new dog. And okay. she's the one who uh, called the veterinarian. So I really made sure she would take full responsibility of having a new dog at home. That sounds great. Anything William's done that has impressed you as a mom? Well, he's the one preparing right now. He's preparing some recipes, some dog tree stop cake. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, and working on a book for a dog tree to be uh, published. So really, he's more into cooking. And oh, okay. He's feeding the dog on a regular basis. Like every day, he's uh, feeding at least in the morning or the evening. Oh, okay. That sounds good. So you might have a canine chef star on your hands. I don't know. Maybe William will be the star of a new Doggy Chef TV show. You never know. He'd love that. (laughs) All right. With Free Play Dog Company, I mean, you have the product Multisack. It's a new company. What other things can we expect maybe in 2011? Well, we will keep uh, developing other Multisack versions. So there's going to be 11 versions of it to make sure it fully responds to the needs of a different type of activities that we're doing with our dog, for the sports, for the uh, urban people, and also the one who love uh, really fashion. So really developing 11 version to fully make sure people really have what they, they're looking for. Well, that's a good point because there's over 150 recognized dog breeds and zillions of mutts out there. And as you know, there are everything from dogs that can fit in your hand to dogs who could probably pick you up. And there are dogs that like to be sporty dogs and dogs that like to be pampered. And so it seems to make a smart business sense for you to be able to have diversity in your product. Yeah. All right. Well, that sounds good. How can people learn more about you and your company? Well, follow us on freeplaydog.com. Uh, mm-hmm. There will be plenty of new information coming really shortly. Plus, I invite you to enter your email address. So as soon as we have our new product available, you're going to be informed. Okay. And I think you said you'd be willing to give away when the multi-sock is available to somebody who emails me on the radio show. So the person who emails me, Arden, at 4 leggedlife.com with the code word free play will be the winner of the soon to be revealed multi sack created by Sylvie Lamprin. It's coming out later this year, so just hang on, hang on. Um, it will come, and then when it does come, we'll be able to give it away. I also have a newsletter called Arden Moore Knows Pets. It comes out every month. 
and we'd love to be able to give away a multi-sack there. We've got people all over North America that get that newsletter, and the whole purpose is to help people laugh, love, and learn about their pets. That's not a bad mission, is it, Sylvie? It's a great one. All right. Any parting words you'd like to say before we bid adieu? I'm trying to do a little French reference. I don't know a lot of French, but I like Quebec. It's a great place. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me on your show. I'm very happy to be there to be able to share about poops, both uh, okay. <laughs> education uh, tips as well as our new product that's going to be there available for everyone. All right. And I'm wishing you and Alexandra, William, and Molly and Burton the best success and keep us posted. So when uh, you become this you know, zillionaire and the planet is a lot cleaner, we will know who to give a play bow to. You, Sylvie Lamprin. Thank you, Arden. All right. Well, this is Arden Moore. That wraps it up for today's show. I want to also take this time to thank my producer, Mark Winner. And I'm hoping that I find a throat lozenger so I can get this voice back into gear. But you guys have all been patient listening to me and my little raspy tones. So until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave! <laughs> 